And finally tonight, if it weren't for the city of Boston making a last-minute deal, the home of former Boston Mayor James Michael Curley would be on the auction block tomorrow. The Curley Mansion in Jamaica Plain is one of the few tangible reminders of the legendary politician. The home is a natural source of pride for Curley admirers, but as Marcus Jones reports, it's also a treasure chest of fond memories for Curley's surviving children. I've heard over my lifetime, I've heard a thousand or maybe five thousand people tell me how they would never drive by that house when their father or mother wouldn't say, there's the mayor's house and see the shamrocks on the shutters. 62-year-old Richard Dennis still has fond and vivid memories of his years growing up in the home of James Michael Curley. Richard and his brother George moved in in 1937 when Curley married their widowed mother, Gertrude. My memories of the home have to do with the with the tree outside that we used to climb and the, and the yard where we used to play and things like that. This stately home across from Jamaica Pond was built exclusively for Curley and first occupied in 1915. Parts of the house came from the Connecticut estate of oil baron Henry Rogers. In a deal characteristic of the crafty politician, Curley paid just $1,000 to acquire this spiral staircase, this oval dining room with chandelier and fireplace included, and 28 carved mahogany doors. I remember with great affection being there with my little daughters and so forth at that huge dining room with him at the head of it carving the Christmas turkey. And uh, he, loved, he loved that too. He was, became very fond of those children. James Michael Curley's four terms as mayor, four terms in Congress, one term as governor, and two terms in jail are the stuff of political folklore in Boston. And this home, where he lived and entertained celebrities and dignitaries for more than 40 years, is an integral part of his legend. I gradually came to understand what a magnificent house it was and how important it was and what the events surrounding it meant to the, to, to the governor and also to the political history of the city of Boston. Curley sold the house to an order of the Roman Catholic Church in 1956 when it became too expensive to maintain. It went for $60,000 then. It will cost a lot more than that one and a half million dollars to be exact for the city of Boston to hold on to this piece of history. Some think the mansion should become the official home of Boston's mayor, but Mayor Flynn would rather turn the property into a museum. Richard Dennis is not happy with either of those options. I'd, I'm not sure that a mayor uh, would, would be comfortable moving into that house and making it his residence uh, because of the political amp, uh, ramifications. You think it's too, you think it's too lavish? Uh, it may be, and I think that uh, politicians need to stay close to their constituency. Now, Curley didn't. He made the move. But when he made the move, it was to demonstrate that it could happen. And so I think there was a difference there. Last weekend, more than 600 people toured the Curley home, some interested in buying, others just interested. The Curley era may be long gone, but his mansion has yet to see its last hurrah. For the 10 o'clock news, I'm Marcus Jones.